Yo, what's poppin' everyone? Welcome back to the channel, Zach Lesage here. Today we're gonna be going over the best deck in format. Of course, it has to be Charizard EX. Now, we've covered Charizard EX a few other times. However, I feel like this is the definitive list if you're heading towards Indianapolis or just in this general time period if you're heading to Challenges, Cups, or anything else. This deck is absolutely fantastic. I got the deck list, the strategy, the gameplay, the insight, and more. So if that all sounds great, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into this list. With a list that's heavily based between Tord Reklevs and Rowan Stavenows, it's really one of those things where Charizard is going to look very similar, except you might notice some differences in the tech cards. Um, some lists are going with the Eerie Devolution package, and other lists are going for more of a heavy Turo package. After playing them both, I'm actually a fan of them both. However, I do think that this build is going to be a little bit more popular and likely to see the most amount of success at Indianapolis and other major events. That being said, feel free to play the list that you're feeling. I know that I've gone back and forth between both Prime Catcher, Max Belt, and Hero's Cape in this list. Um, I think decks are really in a format where you can build your own deck and see success to some degree as long as you know your matchups and, of course, you got a little bit of luck because that goes a long way. Um, this list is available in the description. You can copy and paste that right into live. We got that TSS5 discount on PTCGL store codes. And if you need any physical cards for this deck, we have our sponsors at Kayfabe Cards as well. Um, if I'd be sleeving this deck, I'd be sleeving it up into some katana sleeves. Maybe not the green ones, uh, just because I like to match them with the deck a little bit, but um, they're the best sleeves around that the Shuffle Squad uses. Now, we're going to dive into each card individually, or at least the cards that matter. So let me get into it and uh, explain why there's some of the counts and some of the cards that we got in this deck. Kicking things off, I've decided to go with three of the Charmanders with Heat Tackle and one of the ones with Blazing Destruction. So players like Tord might go with a full four Heat Tackle and I've seen other players doing it as well. I like playing the one Charmander with Blazing Destruction just because of Sableye, because this deck does not run Jirachi. That is also dictated in my uh, Charmeleon choice by going with the Flare Veil ability Charmeleon instead of splitting it between a Flare Veil and a Charmeleon with Heat Tackle. Now, I just really want to stop some of these uh, things that are going on on my bench. So whether it's a de-evolution, whether it's some Sableye damage counters, um, that's really what I'm trying to prevent here. I have decided to go with two of the Charmele Charmeleon because after talking with Rowan at the Cups where I got bodied twice, uh, we, he did told me that he's just like, it's a net positive card. Like you have a, more options to evolve in a world where de-evolution and eerie exists. I, I tend to kind of agree. I've also added a mist energy into the deck um, over the fourth Arvin. A lot of lists are just switching to three Arvin because we're using Cleffa more and more turn one. We're able to use Rotom and quite often, Arvin's value drops as the game progresses. Pidgeot EX is going to be our main card that's searching things out, and a lot of the times we're going to go Rare Candy into Pidgeot EX, searching for either a Rare Candy or a Charizard to match the one that we don't have in our hand, and getting out our Charizard EX. Charizard EX is going to be the main focus of this deck, being able to use its uh, attack that scales as the game progresses. So not only do we get to accelerate the energies to our Pokemon, come up with some explosive gameplay out of anywhere with its ability, we do have that attack where we're smoking our opponent for 180. And every single time they draw a prize card, we can really hit the limits of 330 damage. And of course, we do have both Choice Belt and Defiance Band as damage modifiers. So that's kind of our light, light versions of Max Belts. Um, giving us some opportunities there. Um, in order to give ourselves a little bit more stability and to take a two prize card liability off the board, we can sometimes late game take away Pidgeot EX with Professor Turo um, and get out the barrel um, and only have single prize card Pokemon in play and a Charizard or only single prize card Pokemon in play because we're attacking with Radiant Charizard. Um, the barrel is going to give us some opportunities and some light up some it's it's kind of like a diet Pidgeot if we're really thinking of it like that. Um, still got all the package of the Rotom and the Luminion. These are both carriers to draw extra cards, search for a supporter we need. And of course, we could take them away with Professor Turo or Collapse Stadium. Uh, they both can hold the Forest Steel Stone, so we're able to search for whatever combo piece we're missing, making this deck incredibly consistent. One of the new additions to this deck is going to be Cleffa. 
it's grasping draw allows us to drop until seven so our whole hand plan is to use things like buddy buddy poffin ultra ball thin our hand down get everything out in play and have a single prize card pokemon that our opponent that our opponent's forced to knock out or not knock out while we set up our board and draw some cards not only does it attack cost nothing meaning we could retreat into it and use its attack for free and also has free retreats there's a lot of interesting cards um, in this deck in general, including things like Roxanne, including things like Prime Catcher. Um, I think those are really going to happen when they happen during the game, and you can't necessarily always have a plan for cards that are supposed to be played at unexpected times. So I'm going to show some gameplay, see exactly what's going on with this deck, show you what Charizard EX can do. Uh, I do plan on holding a Charizard EX Master Course in the future, so if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, let's jump into this gameplay. Okay, so we're going to call Tails, and we're going to see how this goes. We got Tails. Typically, I like going second with um, Charizard, so I don't want to go first. I mean, it's not worse if you go first. It just gives us more opportunities to play our supporters on our first turn if we're able to go second with the deck. Um, and this is really one of those games. If we went first, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but... Um, we could have been in a situation where our opponent was able to, um, like, we just go Rare Candy Pidgeot. Like, we don't have Charmanders. At least Arvin is going to help us get there. Um, this should be a pretty favorable matchup for us when it comes down to, uh, it looks like it's, like, some future hands box. So, our Pidgey is probably going to get knocked out, which means that we should have opportunities to knock out their Iron Crown EX. Um... We'll, we'll, we'll kind of play this one through and see exactly what happens. But I'm pretty sure Pidgey's getting fried here. So let's go Arvin searching our deck. I think what I want to be doing here first is going Nest Ball and Forest Seal Stone. So that we're able to get all the pieces necessary. And getting Buddy Poffin and Rotom and drawing some more cards. Because um, otherwise we don't necessarily have everything that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and go Nest Ball, Forest Steel Stone, putting these cards into my hands. And this is how you're able to, like, layer this deck very nicely. So we're going to go Nest Ball, searching our deck for Rotom. We're able to go Forest Steel Stone. We're able to flip the Forest Steel Stone. If we had an energy, we'd also be using, we could also use Call for Family or something like that. Um, that would have been very nice. So we're going to go ahead and use Star Alchemy. I always want to make sure that I'm pressing the right one. Um, here we just want to grab Buddy Poffin because that can help us grab two. We're going to go ahead, play the Buddy Poffin, and we're going to grab Charmander. Um, and the other Charmander that I'm going to grab is this one. If I'm playing against a matchup where I'm not using Heat Tackle or where I don't believe I'm going to be using Heat Tackle, I'm going to try to evolve the Charmander with 70 HP first. Um, I'd love to grab something else, but you got to get double Charmander down just in case your opponent does something to it. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead here and go instant charge. Hopefully we draw into something okay. So at least we drew into Iono if anything happens. If our opponent gets a knockout on Pidgey, that's great. Um, it, like, I mean, it would suck to some degree, but like right now it looks like our opponent's going to be able to go peak acceleration get the knockout on Pidgey. And that's where things are going to get a little bit tough for us. So there's their peak acceleration. That's fine. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just send up Charmander. And we really want to respond here in some capacity. So we'll send up Charmander. Yeah, Charmander at least has 70 HP. So at least peak acceleration isn't knocking it out right now. Of course we had to get the top deck there. So I think what I want to do is just go Rare Candy into Charizard. At worst comes to worst, I get the knockout, and I'm hoping to get a something, right? I think that's really what I'm trying to do, is one, two, three. Um, I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm also going to evolve this one. So having the double Charmeleon at least means that we have the uh, evolution there. And another thing that we can do is just go ahead and play Iono here. Um this is going to allow us to maybe get counter catcher maybe get prime catcher uh 
or none of the above that certainly can happen as well so let's go buddy poffin searching our deck for a bidoof searching our deck for pidgey i don't think there's anything else that i particularly want to do here so as much as i'd like to get the knockout otherwise i think i'd like to go 210 here knock out our opponents maridon ex or maridon non-ex drawing a prize card the single prize card is probably not going to matter at all uh to be completely honest i just don't think it's going to matter at all um but maybe we'll be able to buddy like maybe we'll be able to um professor turo back this charizard ex and everything will just go away maybe our opponent won't knock out our rotom maybe there's a lot of things that just could happen you got to be careful about putting pidgeot ex down in this matchup just because um with iron crown's ability of uh cobalt commands i did not even realize that that's what it's called um they, they could put us in a position where they're able to um get a knockout with ampy very much our opponent definitely shouldn't have attached the energy on their bench before doing anything else um i think that part's a little bit of a mistake we might also should have like maybe we shouldn't have even got the knockout on their pokemon i'm honestly not entirely sure of how i feel about that um because we could have maybe hit this for 240. this is where like if you have max belt things can get a little bit better for you oh they definitely messed up here so this is where um our opponent's gonna have a little bit of a a boo-boo mistake um they have zero cards in hand so the way that they're playing this game is just um unfortunately scripted for them um so what we do here is since they likely are not going to draw into anything we're gonna go ahead and go put these away now that we have other prize card liabilities we're gonna go ahead and go pidgey X. pidgey X now goes rare candy into pidgey X. And what I think I want to do here is go ahead and play Quick Search. And I just want to go ahead and go Quick Search, search for a Prime Catcher. I could have done the Barrel first. Um, that might have been a little bit better. Regardless, not going to matter too, too much. So we're going to go ahead and go Prime Catcher. Prime Catcher is going to allow us to go ahead, bring up the Iron Hands on the bench now able to um retreats i'm gonna send up this uh pokemon that has burning darkness and we are chilling i mean i guess the other thing that i could do here is i could go for the professor turo um which might be a little bit better um, i'm trying to think if that's something that i want to do right now maybe i want to do next turn they still could get the knockouts um I know we have double Professor Turo. So I think what I'll do here, I'll actually just, we have one, two, three. Yeah, we have enough energies. I think what I'll do here actually is going Professor Turo scenario, doing this, sending this up. I had to think about it, y'all. We'll go ahead here, evolve. So at least we're protected there and we get Professor Turo away the Rotom next turn. So that is our last fire. We do got to get some fires out of our uh, prize cards. The other thing that I was thinking about doing was just going ahead and ripping this so we have access to the barrel. So we can get a fresh five cards. So being able to have that extra draw is certainly going to be nice. And in this matchup, our opponent can knock at the knockout on our Charizard exit of nowhere. And you can see that we've almost lost nothing from doing this. Like we want to take Pokemon out of play that our opponent can get extra prize cards from. Let's go Burning Darkness here for 210. Our opponent with zero cards in their hand probably can't do anything next turn. I'm assuming they're just going to go ahead and go draw, pass. Okay, they got Electric Generator. That means that we are going to take our two free prize cards and we will actively deal with that. So that's completely fine. Um, at this point, I think what I want to do is go Quick Search, Search My Deck for access for a super rod because we do need to have some energies back so let's go ahead super rod this up i'm gonna go ahead and go fire fire and charmander i don't know if there's anything else i want to put down like i still might want to um play down professor turos um onto the rotom 
because our opponent, if we go two prize cards here, two prize cards there, I think we actually just win the game. Um, probably going to just save the Professor Turo, to be honest. I don't see a value for us having Manaphy. I'm going to try to draw a card with um, the barrel here. Maybe we'll get something good. Us getting an Ultra Ball, certainly not going to be um, terrible. We could take away Iono and Roxanne. I think I want to leave the Rotom there because I, if they're going after a Rotom, I think we just win the game. So I'm going to take away Iono, Roxanne, search my deck for a Charizard, um, and we just put the two Fire Energies back. We also have the Turo, and we're also going to be guaranteed to get a Fire Energy at some point. So let's go ahead and go like this. We're going to go grab our two Fire Energies that we put back with Super Rod. And we are big chilling in this matchup. We're going to go ahead and do 210 here. And next turn with Pidgeot. <clears throat> I want to search out a boss's orders to knock out an Iron Crown. At that point, if they knock out a Charizard, even drawing three prize cards, they automatically will lose the game. Uh, there's just not enough cards for them to win this game. And even if they attack us with Peak Acceleration, now that they have their two retreat costs, I don't particularly know what their plan is. So they're going to go Peak Acceleration... And that's fine. Um, they could do 160, uh, 200. That's still not enough to knock out a Charizard. I actually think it would have been better to go Ampy very much. Um, so maybe they just go with a Maridon approach. I'm honestly not sure. Um, we already have the boss in our hands. So no matter what happens, we're just going to go ahead and play boss. I'm also, what I'm going to do here is use Quick Surge. Quick Surge is going to allow us to use our Collapse Stadium. So now we don't need to play the Turo on the Pokemon we were planning on playing Turo on. Yeah, our opponent's just going to concede there. You can see that even with a really tough hand, we were able to set up the game very well and uh, pull the victory against our opponents. And that's what we got going on for our video today. There's going to be a lot of tough things like should you use Barrel first, should you use Quick Search first, and that's something that's going to come up and it's going to be a little bit more natural as you're playing the game. In a lot of cases, if you're able to thin your hand down, it's better to go with Barrel first because you might get the card you want off Quick Search and then get a bonus Quick Search to advance your board state even more. Um, with all these little plays, the deck can get quite complex. However, you're still a Charizard deck and you could also just go Rare Candy Charizard Attack. So there's simplicity, but behind it, there's a lot of complex things that you could be doing with Charizard, which easily makes it the best deck in format. Like I said, I plan on holding a master class on this on Metafy in the near future, so stay tuned on that. Um, in the meanwhile, I am hosting both master classes for Roaring Mooney X with the Dunsparce and Lugia Chinchino, both decks that I've been playing a lot lately um, and doing very well with lately at regionals and at Toronto League Cups. Um, I also offer regular coaching, so hit me up for that if there's anything you notice here. And if you're trying to up your game, I'm a chill dude. So even if you just want to have a session where we get to hang out, play some Pokemon, totally worthwhile. Links for everything is going to be in the description. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And there's a lot of great content coming up with the Shuffle Squad. We did add a couple new um, video creators, I was going to say creators, um, that were that they're within the Shuffle Squad, but we've added them to our channel. They may have made up one or two videos before each, um, but they're both very popular, so stay tuned for that. There's some new great stuff in store, and we have a lot of great things on the horizon, too, with the Shuffle Squad. I can't wait to unleash some cool things that we've been working on in the background really soon. That being said, I really appreciate the opportunity. I'll catch up with all y'all later. Peace out, and have a great one. Want to support the Shuffle Squad? Be sure to check out all of our sponsors in the description to pick up Pokemon TCG singles, sealed, and PTCG live codes. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from the Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content watches what we have going on every single day every single week even from time to time and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the pokemon tcg community so if you haven't already be sure to give this video a like subscribe to the channel and even leave a comment to help boost the youtube algorithm that being said we'll catch you with our next video thanks again take it easy